This is Linkstack, an open source version of Linktree. So if you're wanting a nice, simple landing page that has all your links, you might be doing social media, you might have a gaming server or something where you just want a nice single page that has all of your links to wherever you want it to go, I'm going to show you how you can get all of this set up. So welcome back to another video, guys. So like I just mentioned, we are covering a link stack in this video. Now we will be deploying this via Docker and I have the compose file like normal. Um, the structure for this video I'm going to just show you around link stack and just how you use it how you utilize it and then uh, if you're unfamiliar with how you can actually get this deployed then that's what the end of the video is going to be I'm going to cover how you do all of that but for now let's just jump into link stack and I'll show you around so like what we were just looking at before this is my self-hosted version of link stack now if you're not familiar with link stack and uh, link tree which is the main one that you might be seeing people use especially social media influencers and stuff it's just a landing page that has all of your links for whatever you might be using so for my example for my TikTok side of things I've got my buy me a coffee where people can support me my discord my youtube channel and i can add more stuff which i'll show in a second uh, like my book stack so you can click any of these and it will take you there so for example you click my book stack it will take you to my book stack if you click buy me a coffee it takes you to my buy me a coffee link and so forth and so on so it's very straightforward and very simple and it comes with a very straightforward and easy to use dashboard to manage all of this so let me show you the dashboard so all we have to do is just go out um, to here and type in dashboard in the URL at the top and this will take us to our link stack dashboard so this is very quite intuitive and straightforward to, to use. So let's just quickly cover some key points here. So the main thing with this, right, is you're just adding links to a landing page. That is it. It just makes it look pretty and easy to manage. So what this allows you to do is essentially that. So you've got your dashboard, which gives you your high level view to start off with. So it shows you your links that you have and you can see how many clicks people have had. So you can see the buy me a coffee. There's been two clicks, the book stack, has one click the discord and youtube has zero clicks and then you can come down and see a more overview of your site statistics you know the total links the total clicks and then total users so you can actually have multiple users to be able to log in to your link stack dashboard and stuff like that i don't worry about that um i'm just going to have the one user for my example and as you can see down here so dashboard is just a nice high level view now add a link is pretty self-explanatory right this is where you'll come to add any link set you want so here is pretty cool because and what they give you is the first default part of this is the select a predefined site and with this what happens is you can choose from here and it will give you a list of essentially like a block template uh, that you can use um, from here so if you had any of these that you wanted to share then this is where you could select it so let me just have a look here for something that i could maybe add all right so we've just got something called website so let's click that um and it says here leave blank for a default title i'm just going to leave that blank but let's put my tiktoks link in here right eh, for my website so it's just tiktoks.nz right and it will hit save then once we've, we've hit save, what it actually takes you to is the studio section. So you, we see now we're under this links part here. Under here, we can actually see a high level preview of our uh, landing page. So now you can see we've got website. It just does say it's website. So let's actually edit that a bit. And the custom title, we probably want to call this TikToks blog instead. So we can hit save there instead. And if we come back to the preview, you can see that it says TikTok's blog. But the other cool thing here is if we want to add a new link, if you don't want to use anything from that predefined sort of list here, you can click select block. And then you've got other options here as well. So you've got the predefined site, which had all those lists. You've got custom links, so more specific. So like my book stack that I showed you before is a custom link. And my TikTok's website should probably be a custom link as well. There's a electronic business card. So if you wanted to, you could click here and we could give this a custom title. And then let's save this. So save it and let's see how this comes across. So we'll hit save and if we scroll down here, we can see now there's a card. If I go to the main page, we can go there by clicking the view page in the top right hand corner. This will take us to here. Then if I click card, so it's going to download a 
Right, it's going to download like an, your contact card, right? So you can save all of that, um, all, all the details, email address. So it's just a handy way of sharing um, essentially a business card, like I said. So that's cool. So th this is, that was new to me. I haven't played around with that feature before, um, but let's not uh, let's try not get too sidetracked. So if we go back to adding a new link and just looking at the, the rest of the blocks that we had. So yeah, we had the V card, we have the email address, if you want to add, you know, an email, telephone number, add headings, kind of to separate things if you want, adding spaces and just static text. So you can customize the landing page of Linkstack pretty nicely. Uh, and I really like it. It's, it's just going to be a really nice way to share for me my links with my community, which is, yeah, I guess the whole point, right? So that is the link section, which I just showed you before. This is where you can customize any of the links that you already have and just, you know, remove them or whatever you want to do. And again, get that preview on the right hand side. Now, if we come down to appearance, this is pretty straightforward. So if you want, you can change the, the profile picture. So you see how I've got the tech docs logo there. So if I go back to the landing page, that shows it here. And if I were to get rid of that, um, so if I click on the trash can here, which will delete the profile picture. There we go. So then it just defaults to the default uh, logo, which is that there, which is the link stack logo. Um, so yeah, that's why you'll see that when you first set it up. And then what you've got here is the page URL. So by default, I'm running this locally. So this is the port that it all runs on. And I will show this more in detail at the end of this side of stuff. And then just some other features that you can do. You can put a page description. There's that check mark, which is this check mark here, um, whether or not you want that. And then the share button as well. And then themes. There's, I think there's just three default themes that you can have. So if we go select theme, there's a couple you can choose from. So the default one I actually like, but if you want, you can click on say poly sleek and let that one load. We'll go back to our dash, uh, our landing page and hit refresh. There you go, it's changed up the whole entire theme, um, if you like that. And then you can also add a custom background and also there's custom themes if you have them. Um, I haven't looked too much into this. There might be a bit of a community that's creating custom themes around this. So this is where you could add them. And you can also see that there's actually a update available for my theme. So let's try this out. So if I click theme updater, you can see that it's saying, hey, look, Galaxy has a update. So we should just be able to maybe click update all themes and see if this works. There we go. That looked like it did something. It's loading down here with the manage theme. So it's probably just checking everything. And there we go. You can see everything is now up to date. Great. Um, and then another thing I haven't covered, and again, in the top right hand corner, you've got the updater. So if we, this says there's an update available. So if we click that, here we go. So it gives us a choice on how we can actually update to the latest version. So you can see I'm actually running 4.2.3 and the latest is actually 4.7. So let's update automatically. So let's click that and let's see how the automatic update in link stack works. So it's creating a backup. I'm assuming I'm probably going to lose connection for a bit while the container itself restarts. I would assume here we go. So now it's preparing the update. It's updating and this is where I'm assuming we might lose connection, but it might happen nice and quick. So it doesn't actually time out. I'm sure we'll find out. Here we go. It looks like it's refreshing now. It's finishing up and we've been updated. Sweet. So we could check out the release notes for anything that's changed or we could head back to the admin panel by clicking the admin panel. So just click that and we are right back, which is awesome. So to be honest, that is essentially link stack. It's straightforward. And that's what I love when a service just does what it should do. Um, so yeah, so now, so that is link stack. Now let's actually get into deploying link stack. So I have the Docker compose now on their official website, they have the Docker run commands, but I like to use Docker compose and I'm going to have all of this on my book stack. So there will be a link in the description um, to visit the book stack or have all the documentation, uh, everything I cover um, all there. So feel free to follow along. So let's get into looking at the compose and how we actually deploy this. Right, so this is their main website. So it's pretty straightforward. If you want, there's actually a couple options here. You can self host this, right? Or you can actually use their own their own solution for doing that, right? So if we click get started, you can see that there's the self hosted options, right? 
and they also have a hosted instance of it as well for a pretty cheap single user one dollar a month but for us we are doing the docker version so if i click docker version here you can see they, they give you a set of commands, you pull the image, and then you can set up the deployment. And they give you a couple of deployment commands. So there's pretty much like the stock standard one, or there's one with a bunch of environment variables. Okay. So I've essentially taken this one here, the custom deployment, and turned it into a Docker Compose file, which I'll share with everyone. So let's jump to our server and look at the Docker Compose file. Right, so I'm on my Alzim server right now, and this is the link stack directory. Now, if you're familiar with how I do my Docker uh, kind of setup, I have a folder, and inside that folder is another folder for anything, all, all of my Compose uh, files. So I have one called link stack, which is the folder. And then in here, I just have the Docker Compose file. So now let's just have a look at this, and I'll just break it down real quick. So you can see that we have a single service here and it's called link stack. Now the image we're using is the link stack image. Uh, all of this is all copied and pasted and just to convert it to a compose file from the Docker command I just showed you on the link stack website um, with those environment variables if you want them. Now, when it comes to self-hosting, you don't need to worry about the HTTP server name um, or the address here. But if you're actually wanting to have this publicly exposed, then you're wanting to actually uncomment one of these, like the HTTPS, if you, especially if you're using something like Cloudflare. Now, I'll have a link to a video on how you can expose services uh, using Cloudflare. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. If you wanted to, you would deploy this, you would expose it via Cloudflare with the domain name, and then you would just change this uh, HTTPS server name here with whatever Cloudflare is, um, is exposing. If you have any questions on how you can actually get that up and running, and if you get stuck, jump to the Discord or the YouTube comments. More than happy to help. Um, there's the server admin environment variable time zone, um, and there's just some memory limits and some upload uh, max file sizes and stuff like that. So I've allowed, this is all gonna be in the book stack uh, where you can grab this compose file. And if you want something, you can use it. Otherwise, just comment it out if you don't need it. Uh, but this is pretty much my setup. Now, when it comes to ports, uh, you could run this on 88, um, 80 uh, on this port here. And you could also run it on 443 here for HTTPS. But those ports are always used, especially when I'm self-hosting. Uh, I have a bunch of other containers. So if you're like me, then feel free to assign them different ports like, you know, 8099 um, and 8443 or something like that. And that's how I will access them. Um, and I access it on this one here, which is the HTTPS address. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. And then we've got the restart flag here. So this just means that uh, if the server restarts and it starts back up, that this container will also start back up. And it will only ever stay stopped if we specifically tell it to stay stopped. So if you ever have Docker containers that don't start up after a restart, this is why they don't have that flag. And then we're also just creating a volume. Now, this is where everything for link stack, uh, you know, the uh, configuration, all of that stuff will live. It will live in a volume named link stack it's a compose file nice and easy right so now we've, we've got the compose file so now i'm going to walk you through actually setting all of this up so everything i showed you before i'm just going to um i'm going to grab this compose file and i'm actually going to run this on a raspberry pi that i have so let me quickly jump over to my raspberry pi and i'll show you how we deploy it all right, so we looked at the compose file. Now let's actually stand this up. I was going to use my Raspberry Pi like I was just showing you before, but it's actually just run out of storage at the worst timing, but that's fine. We'll just continue um, using it on my other server. So we've got the compose file. The compose file is the exact same. So when you're ready, uh, we can run a docker compose up hyphen D, and this will stand up everything in that docker compose file. Now, if you don't have docker or docker compose installed and you're just not familiar with it, I have a video which I will link, which you can go check out um, and that will get you all set up to be in a position to run all of these commands. So go check that out and then come back here. So once you've got all of that, we can hit docker compose up hyphen D and that will create the network, the volume and the container. It didn't pull the image because I already have the image pulled. Uh, that could take a few minutes um, depending on your internet speed, but you should be all good to go after that. So it's all created. So now if we go back to our um, 
link stack and i'll just close out this dashboard and we're accessing the address on https so just make sure you're doing that and on that port 8443 because that's the https port so let's hit enter and here we are now you might hit a error about the certificate um, and the website not being private that's okay just bypass that it's just because you're running it locally on https um and then yeah you should be good to just bypass that uh it's just a browser warning and then you should hit this page so the setup page we can choose a language i'm just going to stay with english and hit next and now it's saying here that hey look we're just going to check some dependencies it's just making sure we have all of these which we do and then um, it's saying here about the types of databases so we can hit next and this is where we choose the database type so for our example we are just going to be using sql Lite. it's just like a inbuilt database um, and it works perfectly for small things like this now you could set up your own mysql database as the back end if you would rather um, but in this case we're just sticking with sql Lite. so we'll hit next and now we set up our admin account so let's just set that up and the name tech docs we'll hit next and then it's got enable registration i don't want anyone else to be able to register um so we'll just leave that as that and then the app name i'm just going to leave it as link stack and hit finish setup and there we are so this is our login screen so we'll hit login and now with that um, email address that we use and the password and now we've logged in to the dashboard and now we're free to set up everything as we want. So if we hit view page, this is just how it looks default. But like I showed you previously, now you can go into add links, add all your links, get it all set up how you want, and you are good to go with your link stack. And then um, check out my Cloudflare video like I just uh, referenced before, if you're keen on getting this exposed publicly so other people can actually access it as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much uh, for sticking right through if you did. Um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't. And also check out our Discord. We actually just gave away a Raspberry Pi 5 recently as a com little giveaway competition that runs in the Discord. So yeah, if you want to be part of those, make sure you join. We also help each other out there as well. So thank you so much for all of the support. Um, I hope you have a fantastic new year and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.